know what percentage of venture capital funding goes to minority run firms and, and how is that shaping how you're thinking about investing? Yeah, we estimate about 1% of funding goes to black and Latino founders, 3% to if you include women as well. That compares roughly to 70% of the U.S. population being black, Latino, or women. So when we looked at that data, we felt like there's a massive gap and it has, doesn't have to do with a meritocracy uh, and there is some issues in the, in the system. That, that's stunning to me. Um, I expected the number to be low. 1%, though, says so much about what is and what can be, so to speak, doesn't it? Yeah, and it ties pretty, pretty evenly to the asset allocators, right? If you think about globally, assets managed by people of color is 1% across all asset classes. And within venture capital, you see a pretty strong correlation with 90 plus percent of VCs being men GPs and 90 plus percent of VC funding going to men. And so I think there is a correlation and it doesn't have to just do with the founders. There's GP, GPs and LPs who are also a part of the system. But how does it impact how you look for companies and, and who you look for, the, the kinds of founders that you're willing to get behind? Yeah, so we still are in venture, so we only invest in roughly one out of every hundred companies that we see. Um, so it is competitive, but we are focused on women and minorities. So, so far, we've invested in 15 companies. 87% uh, of those are black, Latino, or women. 47% are women, uh, and 47% are black, Latino. So we want to make sure that we're investing, over-investing, and representing the people who are representative of the population in the U.S. Um, and so I think it's built into our DNA. We think we say diversity is in our DNA. And we focus pretty heavily and make sure we have the processes in place to remove our biases. Because even as people of color or managers of one, who are women, you will have biases in your system. So you can't be fooled to think, as a GP of color, you naturally just get to invest in more people of color. You have to be pretty methodical about it. Well, all of your employees, from what I understand, are either people of color or, or women, um, correct? Right. And what, what I found really interesting, too, and I love the way that you, you put this, is that you have these sort of five pillars, one of them being trying to develop an ecosystem of diverse companies, founders, and investors. And the key word that jumps out to me is ecosystem, right? That's what it's all about, an ecosystem that you're trying to find and develop, not just singular people. Yeah, I think one of the things for us is we're trying to build a market, right? So if you're an early stage software VC fund, you always know there's going to be more software founders for you to invest in. For us, that wasn't necessarily the case given the numbers were so small. And so we really were focused, hey, if we can scale our fund over time like we want to, how do we ensure the ecosystem of diverse founders grows? One of the ways we do that is by trying to have content, right? So producing research reports, doing interviews. How do you encourage people of color to want to actually start businesses versus the headlines always being, oh, 0.00% of funding goes to black women. That doesn't necessarily encourage black women to want to start businesses. So what are you doing to create positivity to encourage the future founders? So when we do raise future funds, there will be more founders in the pipeline who actually want to join venture capital. Do you think this period is going to be an awakening? that we have woken up the country in terms of what needs to happen and in the kinds of places that we need to see it happening and that it's truly going to lead to, to bigger things and better things ahead? I think we're cautiously optimistic. I think having funds like SoftBank and Andreessen make announcements definitely helps. And there's two sides to every story. Some people say it's not enough. Others support it. Um, I think net-net it is a positive for the ecosystem. I think I'm really going to be focused on six to 12 months from now. Uh, really checking in on a lot of these firms and seeing, hey, you know, what have you done? I think it's, you know, relatively small dollars for a lot of these institutions. Uh, it's large dollars in the scheme of things, given we're a $40 million fund and we're one of the largest funds focused on diversity. So these are large funds relative for diversity funding, but still small dollars for SoftBank. And so are you actually doing what you said you were going to do? Can we actually track the data? And that's one thing I push these people is to focus on the data. Don't just come out with announcements. How do you actually change your internal processes that you've done before you make these announcements so you can actually change the systems and get funding to these individuals. Be beyond issues of, of race, I mean, what looks interesting to you in terms of the kinds of companies that you're putting your, your money with? Or, you know, we're, we're in this, the other great issue of the day, obviously, is the pandemic and how we're yep. going to not only be dealing with it for the, you know, let's say the foreseeable future, but also what the new normal is going to look like on the other side of it. How is that shaping your view on the kind of money you're putting in where? Yeah, I mean, I think short term, we're, we're obviously not going to invest in things that we think won't survive, like brick and mortar, anything that's really heavily relying on in-person, as we do think a second wave will happen in the fall. But I think long term, we are 10-year early stage investors, and so we're always focused on, do we think these industries will exist in the next five to 10 years and create more value? 
even if you see short-term pops, you know, do you think systemically that e-commerce will continue to accelerate faster? Do you think grocery stores or food and retail will continue to accelerate faster? Or do you think this is a short-term period? So we're, we're doing a lot of analysis there just to really get our viewpoints from a macro demographic um, trend. Um, but really, we haven't seen a slowdown in deals. Last year, we saw 750 deals. The other date, we've seen 700 already. So the deal flow has been very strong. Top of the funnel continues. Um, a lot of founders who have been forced, either fired or quit their jobs, have been forced to really think about what they want to do. And so I think it actually creates um, more innovation than less, um, even though you, you see that really hurting a lot of small businesses, particularly people of color, where 40% of black businesses going out of business since COVID. Uh, and so we are focused to make sure how do we actually help those businesses who've gone out, even if we don't invest in them as well.